Hi, I'm Norm Rodrig. I grew up in Augusta. I'm an amateur photographer and videographer and have an interest in Augusta's history. I thought it would be interesting to learn more about Augusta's iconic restaurants and bars from the mid-20th century. In 1960, there were 42 restaurants in Augusta, according to Manning's Augusta Business Directory. And this wasn't all of them, as some eateries were not listed in Manning's. They served all kinds of foods from upscale white tablecloth fare to simple grab-and-go hot dogs and pizza. Whatever the menu, you were never far from a restaurant. Many establishments were better known as bars or taverns, but served wholesome homemade meals. Augusta's Water Street, the downtown commercial hub of the city, had the highest concentration of restaurants and bars. There were 15 eateries from Rhines Hill to Edwards Mill in 1960. Other streets such as State Street, Bangor Street, and Northern Avenue were also dotted with restaurants, all within walking distance of each other. I have been getting together with the owners and families of several of these iconic Augusta eateries. They and their employees and patrons have generously shared their time and memories about life in Augusta many years ago. These interviews capture a sense of life in Maine's capital city in the mid 20th century through the eyes of families who started, owned, and operated these restaurants. They knew you, your family, and very likely what you liked to eat. You and your friends, family, and coworkers were regular customers. Your kids might have worked in one of these restaurants after school and, in fact, gone on to buy and own that restaurant, as was the case with Foster's, Bowley's, and Alex Corner Restaurant, to name a few. While we can't explore in depth each and every restaurant, we can hopefully represent what it was like for all of them to own and operate a restaurant in the mid 20th century and what that meant for the rest of us who frequented these establishments. In the coming weeks, I will be sharing several of these remembrances on Facebook as well as YouTube. I hope you enjoy this walk down memory lane. Thank you. Foster's Restaurant, located at 270 Water Street, approximately where Key Bank is today, was a classic diner and one of several Coney High School hangouts. It served Augusta residents from the mid-40s to the late 60s. Let's hear more about Foster's from Warren and Sally Foster. I'm Warren Foster, son of Stanley Foster, who is the owner of Foster's Restaurant on Water Street in Augusta. Stanley, my father, lived in Manchester with his mother and father and sister. And his father died when he was 14, so he became the man of the house. He attended Coney, and each day from Manchester, he would get, make his way to Coney either by hitching a ride or walking or trolley that ran from Winthrop to Augusta. He loved Coney. He, he was a good student, an honor roll student. He's the editor of the Coney Q and also the literary magazine. After working at Packets for 15 years, Dad purchased Packets in 1941 for $4,000 and renamed it Foster's in 1945. I became Stan's daughter-in-law um, in 1960 and found very quickly after joining the family that there were jobs available for me and ultimately became both a substitute and a part-time waitress, cashier, um, smoke shop, attendant, and everything else that went on uh, in that restaurant world. Stan worked all the time. Everybody said a 14-hour day, but I always thought it was more than that. We seldom saw him at night, and in the morning he was gone long before anybody else. Stan said he opened at 4, but we know that he opened earlier than that for anybody who was interested, most importantly, Augusta's policeman. He was always worried about being there for the policeman. Um, but he also helped out people that were on the shift from Littman's, Depositors Trust, Kennebec Journal employees, and others who needed an early breakfast. Stan also had a number of philanthropies. He supported the South Parish Church, Easter, Christmas, special breakfasts and events. He donated his time and talent. He also supported the high school with ads and the yearbook and the magazine and always there to help um, in those different ways. He also was a Mason, and I'm sure that he put his time in uh, in the community helping in Masons also. What else? Fort Weston. He did a lot of volunteer work and 
contributing. Dan was open six days a week, but worked there every Sunday cleaning and prepping for the following week. Favorite waitresses there was a little woman named Peanut. None of us knew her last name. I found that out just recently. Her name was Peanut Stone. The head waitress is Muriel Eldridge. A lot of Eldridges in the area are related to Muriel. Good. I'm Mike Eldridge. Uh, my mother, Muriel Eldridge, worked for many years at Foster's Restaurant as a head waitress. And that afforded me the chance to work there after hours during my high school years, starting off as a dishwasher. Stan's wife, Marion, did some of the cooking at home and sent it down in a taxi, probably North Taxi, uh, and she mostly at Foster's served as a cashier. She was always, I think, people would picture her on the cash register. Her assistants were Gladys Turner and Madeline Nash, and they both learned the same skills, really. She shared all of them with them. Um, they had specials every day of the week, every Thursday. If you went to Foster's, New England boiled dinner was on the menu. Friday, some sort of seafood or fish. Every day was special there. People went in just for desserts and coffee. And the most famous and well-received was Mary's raspberry pie. Her pies were all wonderful, but that was the best one. And people ordered those raspberry pies for takeout to take home for parties. I worked quite a bit at my dad's store, Nicholas and Ryan, downtown. And one of the benefits of that was being able to go to Foster's restaurant for lunch. And Stan Foster ran that place for years. And the thing I remember most about it was, besides Stan himself, who was quite a character, was his raspberry pie. I must have gone through dozens of pies over the course of the summer, I think. He had the very best. I can still taste it, and I still haven't had anything to match it. One story that everybody likes to tell is when I was helping Stan on the counter and he was cutting pies. I didn't know I was supposed to get seven pieces out of a pie, so I cut a pie into six pieces, which is what I was used to doing at home. And Stan was very upset, to say the least, so I had to have a pie-cutting lesson from him. So seven slices to a pie. She also made bread pudding found out a secret that they had for bread pudding. They put leftover chocolate cake in it and called it chocolate bread pudding, and that was very popular. Huge chocolate chip cookies uh, were another favorite. Food was exceptional there. My fondest memory is coming in and having one of Mary Perkins' chocolate chip cookies fresh out of the oven. They were like six inches in diameter moist and full of chocolate chips, and I can remember the smell of those to this day. The part of the Foster's restaurant that I remember was Stan had a smoke shop. It was just attached to the restaurant. It was basically a small door off to the side of the restaurant, and this was Stan Foster's personal baby. He would sell cigars and whatever, and then he had an assortment of risque jokes that he'd have hidden in the corner for people to come in and see. And his wife Marion put up with it, but she was kind of, she was kind of more interested in getting the restaurant, you know, staying back in the restaurant. But it was a fun experience. Another uh, memory about Foster's, I think, is the fact that an awful lot of famous Augusta residents, maybe a few infamous ones, also loved hanging out in Foster's. Um, the merchants that worked right around Foster's Restaurant, Jim Dowling and Bennett Cates from Nicholson and Ryan, um, all the Viles, uh, Bill Viles, the, uh, Bridges, Chester Bridge, and his sons, John and David. He had celebrities that dropped in, including uh, Bill Cohen, who was a, a frequent Foster visitor and a picture that he gave to Stan and hung on the wall at Foster's Restaurant commends Stan on giving a square meal that was a fair deal. Foster's also was a hangout for the high school kids. It was a place that they could access pretty easily and they were always welcome down there. I think Doc's and Mike's were probably the other two major restaurants in Augusta that a lot of kids found easy from um, access from Coney. So, he impacted a lot of lives in our community in that way. There were about maybe 12 big booths, maybe 10 or 12 big booths, and then a lot of little two-seater booths along the side of the wall. So, it, and with the fountain, it seated probably, that would make probably 40 or so people. So it was pretty, 
and pretty busy. There were usually people waiting at the lunchtime. Three, when I saw that article you sent, three weeks before that fire, I had our son. Because I thought, this is funny, I don't remember a lot about being there or anything. And so I was telling our son that. And he said, well, you were, you were probably way too busy. Because it's one of those things that I spent so much time there. But that fire, I kind of remember the smell and removing things and making the plan. Once they moved across the street, I worked there again. But I was like gone, um, you know, as far as the fire was concerned. That was in 67. and. The Hotel North, of course, was blamed, or something happened in the Hotel North. I don't know that we ever really uh, knew for sure, but there was a story that went around at the time that somebody fell asleep smoking in bed and that, that was the fire. But the damage, the water damage and the drilling holes in the floors for the, yeah, it was really very serious. There was no way Stan could stay in that restaurant. Um, and so he didn't have to move too far, but it was never the same, which was smart to have a place to eat right in that building for people. I know later there was a bakery or something that tried to live there and was there a while, but the, um, you know, the restaurant did okay. Stan was happy, and, but it just wasn't the same place. I have an idea knowing your father. It was it's pretty long. quick. I, he, it was pretty quick. Yeah, we can call him Faster Foster. And if anybody could get another restaurant going quickly, it would be Stanley. Yeah. He just lived for that restaurant. Foster's had good food and a good reputation and was always busy. Um, but particularly in the 50s and 60s, it was a very successful restaurant then. My first vehicle was earned. I started working at 50 cents an hour at, at Foster's. And like I say, this was pretty good money back then. This was 56 years ago. And I was saving up, and at the time I was a sophomore, I had saved up enough money with what I had to buy my first car, which was a 1959 Austin Healey Sprite. And that was the, the first vehicle, and I was proud because it was something that I put my hours in working, washing dishes and flipping burgers, whatever, at Foster's, and it was the start of my life and my independence, and I didn't have to walk to Coney anymore, so it was good. <laughs> Thank you.